Welcome to the darkness that fills my mind. It's the time of year where we thrive on all manner of lurid and morbid tales. Where things go bump in the night and the scariest monsters are the ones that lurk within our souls. <laughs> October is here. Welcome, my ghoulish fiends, to episode three of Beauty Unlocks October Madness Episodes. Before we get into episode three, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us at Beauty Unlocked The Podcast or Beauty Unlocked Podcast. If you enjoy Beauty Unlocks content, consider becoming a patron of the show where you'll have access to exclusive content and receive extra goodies for as low as $3 a month. Come check out our tiers on patreon.com forward slash beauty unlocked. Without further ado, let's get into this morbid and grotesque episode. Listener's discretion is strongly advised. <laughs> Tell, O Sicily, and ye, the many islands of the sea, the judgments of God. Confess, O Genoa, what thou hast done, since we of Genoa and Venice are compelled to make God's chastisement manifest. Alas, our ships enter the port, but of a thousand sailors, hardly ten are spared. We reach our homes, our kindred and our neighbors come from all parts to visit us. Woe to us, for we cast at them the darts of death. Whilst we spoke to them, whilst they embraced us and kissed us, we scattered the poison from our lips. Going back to their homes, they in turn soon infected their whole families, who in three days succumbed and were buried in one common grave. Priests and doctors visiting the sick returned from their duties ill and soon were numbered with the dead. O oh, death, cruel, bitter, impious death which thus breaks the bonds of affection and divides father and mother, brother and sister, son and wife. Lamenting our misery, we feared to fly, yet we dared not remain. I just read to you Historia de Morbo Sive Mortalitate Que Fuit de 1348, an account written by Gabriele de Musi, who was a notary from Piacenza. So Historia de Morbo chronicles the plague in Caffa, which was a trading city in Crimea, and Sicily. So Gabriele says that the Mongols besieged the trading city of Caffa in Crimea between 1346 and 1349, which they did. So, because the army remained in one place for so long, the Black Death, although it wasn't known as Black Death at the time, but we'll say the plague had time to spread from man to man, or should I say from infected flea from rodents to man. Doesn't matter, they didn't know it was infected fleas that gave plague. But okay, 
So since the enemy army, the Mongol army, was dying at an epic rate from plague, what did they decide to do? They decided to deliberately hurl the rotting corpses of the dead over the city walls, which in turn infected those people inside. And it poisoned the wells and it caused a sickening stench. So those that escaped Kaffa fled by ship to Sicily, Genoa, and Venice in 1347 and 1348, carrying with them the disease. This is where it gets interesting. It was formally believed that Demusis had been present in Kaffa and traveled in one of those disease-laden ships to Piacenza. But it has been determined that he probably never left home and was, in fact, in Piacenza during 1347. So you're probably asking me right now, where is Piacenza? I'm glad you asked. Piacenza is about two hours and 42 minutes away by car from Venice. This is by car present day. Five, six hundred years ago, it was not just two hours and 42 minutes away. It was days away. And it's a city. So Piacenza is a city in the Emilia Romana region of northern Italy. So Demusis apparently recorded an early example of biological warfare when he described the hurling of plague-infected cadavers over the Kaffa city walls. The thing is that he was never there. So this got me thinking. I'm like, okay, hold up. So you, you were not present in Kaffa when there was a siege to the city. But you're talking about hurling plague-infested or infected bodies over the city walls. And I was like, all right, Carissa, this, this, this is interesting. We, we've got to find an article about this. And I'm so glad that I continued to scour the internet for you because we're actually going to take a look at this. <laughs> is it possible for a flying corpse to distribute the plague? What do you think? Let's get into it. Now, I know that the subject matter is quite morbid. It's grotesque. I know. I know. This is why I'll be making commentary along the way because, you know, to lighten it up. I don't want you guys to lose your breakfast or your lunch over this whole topic of imagining flying corpses. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was gross. But... We're going to make it a bit, it's going to be a, a light, it's a heavy episode, but we'll make it light with some humor, with some of my sarcastic humor. Here we go. Also, if you are listening to this during breakfast, let me know what you are eating. And if you're listening to this during lunchtime or dinner time, let me know. Send me pictures. What are you having? I want to know what you're eating. So my mind started spiraling and I was like, well, it is possible that armies that had catapults if they had no ammunition to say the i mean to call it ammunition it wasn't ammunition but if they didn't have anything to hurl at a certain point you know when they're trying to penetrate walls and everything it it, it has been recorded in, in history that armies would fling feces whether that was human or animal feces they used to hurl that you know, at walls, they used to hurl pottery, carcasses. So I was like, okay, it is possible that they could hurl plague-infested bodies over city walls. It's a possibility, right? But then I thought, let's be honest. Let's be real honest here. Let me put myself in a soldier's place and I'm there, 14th century, you know, I'm part of this Mongol army. And I'm there, I'm, I'm, everybody's dying around me, right? Because this is a long siege. We've been trying to penetrate these walls for a fuck long time. I'm the one who's, you know, in charge of one of the catapults, right? And I have the chills, I have some fever, my body's aching me. I have this, I have a egg-sized buboes on my groin. It's chafing, it's hurting. I just want to go home. At this point, I just, I just, I just want to die, right? And, and death is imminent. Let's be honest. I, 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 I have plague in the 14th century. So, you know, 
And then my commanding officer, I have no clue, but I'm just making this story up because I have to imagine all of this, right? My commanding officer comes to me and he says, Vickis. And I just look at him and he looks at me and we're looking at each other. And I say, yes. And he says, listen, you see your comrade over here who's dead, died by plague or of the plague, from the plague, whatever. And I say, yes. And he's like, I want you to take this dead man's body, your comrade's body here. And I want you to place it on your catapult. And then I want you to pull the lever, lever, I don't even know, so that you can fling his body over the wall that we're trying to penetrate here. And I'm looking at my commanding officer and I'm thinking, you want me to move Stelios. We're gonna give this, this my comrade here, Stelios is his name. You want me to move Stelios, his plague infected body, you know, that is oozing at this point. It's, he has bubos all over the place. It's oozing pus. There's a stench. He, he's probably pissed and shat himself in the process as well, let's be honest. You want me to touch his body, move it onto my catapult to try to fling him over the walls. And in the process of flinging him, all his juices are coming down on me, right? (laughs) In all honesty, that's a huge no. No, no, and no. Now, back in the day, they had no clue as to the cause of what, how plague happened, right? They didn't understand that it was because of, you know, rats and these fleas on the rats were infected with plague, right? So they didn't understand this. And so my commanding officer would want me to fling this infected body over. I'm already weak as it is, you know, and you want me, no. It's a hard no. And I I can guarantee that all of you right now are shaking your heads. If your commanding officers came to you and said, we, I want you to fling Stegos' body over that wall, would you do it? You know you wouldn't. Now, let's say somebody comes up to me and says, Carissa, I'm going to give you a million dollars. You have your catapult here, you have a plague, just a, a, a plague-ridden body right here. Take that plague-ridden body and put it on your catapult, and you're going to win a million dollars. Now, Anyone who has that kind of money just to give to someone um, by making them do a certain task, they're not going to make it easy. They're not going to give you a hazmat fucking suit, number one. No gloves, no masks, no nothing, right? We're we're talking about, it's like a Saw situation here. If you've ever seen the, the movie Saw and Jigsaw and everything, you know it's not going to be an easy task to get away you know, from this, right? So you're not going to have a hazmat suit. And I know for a fact, as much as I want a million dollars, I rather say a hard pass to that million dollars because I'm not touching someone who just died of plague. So even five, six hundred years ago, if my commanding officer said, if you don't do it, I will punish you. I'm going to look at him and say, excuse me, sir, I have plague. I'm going to die. Yannis, this other comrade right next to me, is going to die. Stelios is dead. We're all dying. You can, you can flog me. You can whip me as much as you want. I am not fucking touching Stelios' dead, plague-ridden body over here. All right? And I know that none of you would do it, too. As you can tell, I have a very vivid imagination. But then as I scoured the internet, I came across this article. And I was like, oh my goodness. (laughs) This This is an article right here. So I've already set the scene in your imagination, right? This article that I came across was an article on Montana.edu. And it was written by Matthew J. Broughton. And it's called Catapulted Death. Can a flying corpse distribute the plague? 
seriously, when I when I fell on this article, I felt like there was the voice of God, and the angels were singing, and were like, they were like, this is the article for you, and I'm like, thank you so much. So Matthew starts his article by saying, in the 1340s, plague came to the Black Sea. In typical human fashion, blame was assigned to a convenient target, foreigners. Now, not much has changed since, right? The Genoese had an established counting house and trading port that processed the goods moving westward to the Mediterranean. There had long been a tense truce between the Genoese Christians and the local Mongols. As tensions rose, a fight broke out in a nearby town and someone died in the tussle. The order was given to oust the Genoese. They were chased back to their stronghold at Kaffa and besieged by the Mongols. The Genoese had the sea to their backs and the locals had no navy, so the siege failed and the encamped army dispersed. Two years later, the siege was renewed, and that is when things got ugly. <laughs> Matthew, I love the way you write. So, the Mongol troops living in the squalor of their makeshift encampment began to die in startling proportions of a resurgence of the plague. The army began to lose its resolve yet again. It was thought that the Genoese were safe and healthy in their stronghold partly due to their religious beliefs, and the dying army was bitter for this. They wanted the enemy to see how horrible a fate had befallen them and hoped to transmit death inside the walls. All right, so, before I continue with Matthew's article here, logically, if there is plague outside the city walls, chances are there is plague within the city walls because as we mentioned it's rodents that carry these infected fleas right so if there's plague outside there's plague inside on with the article limited historical evidence suggests that the army used catapults to hurl their dead over the walls of the city upon the besieged residents, and this directly led to the spread of infection and the successful ousting of the Genoese. Fleeing Genoese who were able to leave by sea took the plague with them back to Italy. It is also proposed that this was the start of the Black Death of 1347 to 1350 in Europe. Could this have happened? Did the corpse missile work? Was this the start of germ bio-warfare and the primary cause of the Black Death? <laughs> I couldn't, I had, I'm sorry, I had to do it that way, so sorry. <laughs> when you're recording alone for so many hours, trust me, you get a little bit inside your head and you're just like, let's get a little bit kooky here. Let's, let's read it like this. All right, back to the article. Several questions need to be addressed if this theory of how plague moved from the Black Sea to Italy is deemed credible. The first aspect of this question removes the importance of the rest of the argument. Were the Genoese healthy at the time of the plague outbreak around Kaffa? Even though the Genoese were holed up in their walled city, the rats most likely had free issue to come and go over and under the walls at night, or heck, even during the day. That's me putting that in. Catapults or not, if the plague was in the camps outside the walls, like I said, it was inside the walls as well. So the thoughts of the besieging army that those inside the walls were, well, wrong. When the siege began anew the second time, which probably coincided with the onset of the area plague, Genoese residents fled back to Italy by ship. All ships with food cargo had pests, and the likelihood that these cargo rats brought the plague to the ports of Italy seems high. Trade ships traveled the area all the time. If plague was in the shipping routes, it was destined for distribution by the commerce of trade, regardless of the events at Kaffa. Next, we come to the issue of who was going to hurl the bodies. Certainly not me, that's for sure. In medieval times, artillerymen were contractors. They were not slaves or conscripts, 
but valued employees. It was believed in that time that the disease was transmitted through the air around the dead and dying. No healthy soldier was going to voluntarily retrieve, haul, load, and fire a rotting corpse of his comrade emitting all the putrid smells and fluids of the plague. This leads to the conclusion that this might have been a myth generated as part of the propaganda of warfare, which yeah, this is me adding this, which still happens today, by the way, uh, or the embellished memories of horrible days gone by, amplified by time. <clears throat> Not much has changed in five, six, seven hundred years, has it? We still, we still use this kind of propaganda. Then comes the issue of whether a dead body can transmit plague. With our current understanding of the zoonotic cycle of bubonic plague transmission, it seems highly unlikely that dead bodies could vector plague. As the temperature of a corpse falls, fleas leave the body. If direct bite transmission for the fleas was to happen, the window of contagiousness would be small, as most or all of the fleas would have jumped ship. There is a chance that there was fluid transfer to those inside the walls. There is the possibility that the speed and force of impact of a flung body is enough to cause splatter. Estimates show that a 200 pound object could be thrown more than 100 yards. If a body strikes a stone wall or street at that high a speed, it is feasible that liquid amounts of bacteria could contact victims near the point of impact, and those given the task of removing and dumping the bodies back over the wall would certainly get quite messy. Undoubtedly, the rats found the scrapes of this mess tasty and this would have helped to boost their population inside the walls which would have had a great effect on the transmission of plague. Well, that portion of the article painted a, a yummy picture. Mmm, so scrumptious. Maybe I should do like that warning I did in the previous episode. Warning, do not eat. Listener's discretion is strongly advised. You might lose your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner, and what you had 10 years ago for lunch, for example, because we are going into details here. Mmm. Mm. To conclude, did bodies fly through the air with the greatest of ease? Did these bodies start the Black Death of Europe? It seems unlikely that this is how things happened. Rats would have moved freely through the walled city of Kaffa, and the fleeing people probably took those rats with them in their ship's cargo. This most likely is how the plague came to the Genoese and to Italy and ultimately the rest of Europe. So we have come to the end of Matthew's article. And the reason why I actually wanted to do this is because when I was researching all things plague related, I came through the same story, you know, that the army was flinging bodies over, you know, the city walls. And I'm like, I, I read this in scientific journals. I read it in two, three other places. And I was like, this, this is just a bit much, you know? And I was like, is it possible? Is it a possibility? Absolutely it is. We weren't there six, 700 years ago, so we have no clue. But in all honesty, I'm going with Matthew here, thinking that no healthy soldier would have actually touched a putrid, rotting body of someone who just died of plague. Like, there's no way that they would want to take the risk it's enough that all their comrades are dying around them so it's highly highly I'm, I'm agreeing here with matthew it's highly unlikely that a healthy soldier would want to touch a body that's just passed you know from plague um so yeah so i will actually add the article this matthew's article onto the show notes but i'll also put in the other articles where i did find you know, this rhetoric of they flung bodies over the city walls because it was, it was, I found it a lot. And of course, the thing is that they're using the contemporary account of Gabriele de Musi, who was not even there. So <laughs> there you go. It goes to show you, you have to, you can't just read one article and go by that one article. You have to read at least 10 to 15 articles 
you know, to make sure that what you're actually reading is credible, first of all. Whew. With all that being said, I do hope you enjoyed episode three. I'll try to make sure that the next episode isn't as morbid. I mean, when we talk about the plague, it is morbid, grotesque. It's, it's, I mean, it's the plague after all. But I'll try to not make it as gross as this episode. <laughs> Remember to tune in next week for our next October Madness episode. I'm Carissa Vickis, and I wish you all a very safe weekend. <laughs> <laughs>